Well, it is a dark age, an age of darkness in the American Academy. According to research by the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education called FIRE, hundreds of colleges around this country have policies encouraging students to report any offensive speech or other crime think they overhear from their classmates. Once such thought crime is reported, squads with Ornelian Orwellian names like Bias Incident Response Team swoop in and impose all manner of penalties. These range from sensitivity training to suspension. How do we get here exactly? Robert Shibley is the fire, executive director of FIRE, and he joins us now. Robert, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks very much for having me. It's hard to believe this is real. Bias response teams? Not only is it real, it's uh, really horrifyingly widespread. We found more than 230 of these teams uh, in our searches uh, across campuses nationwide, and we're sure there's more uh, that we haven't identified. The ones we found, though, uh, cover and they monitor the speech of 2.84 million students. So uh, the idea is that the school is sending out students to tattle on other students for saying things they believe is what, offensive, indecent, inappropriate? Like, what's the yeah, standard? In, in some cases, and the standard varies, but uh, they're actually trying to seek out bias and destroy it on campuses. And so uh, through a series of online um, online forms that you often fill out or just encouraging students, I mean, we see if you see something, say something on uh, some of these, uh, these bias response team websites, they're encouraging people to come forward and they say if you hear something that's biased, and that can be uh, defined as something as... Um, as is, is sort of uh well, vague. that's it. What's yeah, the I mean, so well, it can, be, it can be super vague. and well, it But can, it's always yeah. vague, right? I mean, if it you're going to have a is. rule, a standard, you ought to have to define it, especially if there's mm -hmm. a penalty attached to it. Yeah. Right? So do kids know what's inbounds and what's outside of bounds? Uh, I don't think they do, and it varies from place to place. Some uh, It depends on the protected classes that are uh, covered by the bias response teams. And some of them are crazy, like in Kentucky, one of the protected classes are at the University of Kentucky is smoker status. Um, there's universities that protect size. There's a university, I think Oregon, protects shape. So you're not allowed um, to complain about smoking in Kentucky? Right, well, you're not allowed to try to either um, relate to somebody or avoid relating to them based on a stereotype that you might have in your mind about smokers if it's negative. Um, so not only can you not, uh, you know, you can't even avoid folks based on these things, uh, or it will be, it can be reported as a biased report. Oh, it's probably the only place in the world standing up for smokers. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> but is there, is there a, a list somewhere? Is there like a, a Bible of bias? Like where do you go to find out what the rules are? Well, uh, FIRE has put out this, this bias response team's report, and so if you have, if you're at one of the schools there, you can look, and we've tabulated that, our, uh, that on our website, thefire.org. But frankly, for most students, they're going to have to search around for bias response team or something like that on their website and find out what they can be reported for. And I think one of the really little known or, or little appreciated facts about this is that effectively, these are all going into a big database, generally controlled by the government. Forty-two percent of these bias response teams uh, include police departments. And so, uh, for instance, at Dartmouth, if you go to their bias response form and you can anonymously put something in, that goes straight to the judicial affairs folks and the police. This is like the cultural Dartmouth. revolution, really, the search for kulaks. These are crypto government institutions. All colleges are almost all. They take massive amounts of federal dollars. And yet they're encouraging the violation of constitutional rights, the most basic one, the freedom of speech. Where's the Justice Department in this? Where's, where's the Civil Rights Division? Shouldn't they be swooping in and protecting kids from having their rights taken away? Well, one of the oddities of federal law is that it actually doesn't cover uh, First Amendment violations, while uh, laws like uh, Title VI and Title IX, which have to do with racial and uh, sexual uh, discrimination, those are enforced through the potential loss of federal funding. Uh, the First Amendment and free speech is, is not among those laws. Huh. So what would it take to make it among those laws? It, it would most likely take congressional action to do that. So it would be pretty simple, right? It would just say the First Amendment applies to everyone in the country, as if we needed a reminder of that. I think, I think the complicated part would be determining when they've gone too far for the First Amendment. Obviously, FIRE does that on our website, but you wouldn't want to just take FIRE's word for it. There'd have to be some mechanism for determining, you know what, this time, you know, you're not following the First Amendment. But I guess my last question is, uh, apart from FIRE, mm -hmm. who's there to help kids whose freedom of speech is being abridged by the schools they go to? I, th I think it's fair to say that we're the, the primary folks out there doing that. Uh, there are How other, many staff members do you have? Uh, FIRE is about 50 folks now. Huh. So we've grown a lot, Does the ACLU, the last which years. is supposed to be protecting our civil rights, ever jump in and say, you know, we've had you've a, got a right to say what you think? We've had a good relationship with a, with a number of state ACLU chapters over the years. And so um, we're always happy. I mean, we'll work with anyone. FIRE is a nonpartisan organization, and, and we, you know, we'd love to work with anyone who cares about free speech on campus. It shouldn't be left to 50 people to defend the First Amendment. That's really sad. So I hope you grow. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much.